Hello booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be about my reading plans for the month of April. If you saw my March TBR then you'll know that I'm very much in a mood reading mood um, at the moment and I'm struggling to follow a guided TBR so um, if you've seen that TBR then you'll know that I was allowing the mood to take me but I was being guided by the prompts for my tackle my TBR challenge through the story graph this year. April I've decided I'm not going to go down that route, uh, I've decided I'm going to pick the prompts in advance but I'm, what I'm going to try and do is I've got an idea of the books I want to read for each prompt However, if I'm not in the mood for that book, then I'll see if something else on my um, TBR list will fit it. So this is only a loose um, TBR at this time and it is absolutely subject to change. So I've run the Randomizer app and I will insert a clip here uh, because I've picked all six prompts. I've, picked myself, I've given myself six prompts um, I'm not going to say that I'm going to read them all, but it just gives me, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the prompts and I'm going to randomly select which one I'm in the mood for as the month goes on and then pick a book to fit it. So I'm going to, again, changing it up slightly for April. Um, so next will be a, a short video clip of all the selections that were made. So here is the list. Uh, there are currently 103 items on the list because I've knocked a few things off over the last couple of months. Uh, so I haven't done too badly. I think I've caught up a little bit. So let's randomise the list and see what the first pick will be for April. A book set in the Thames. So let's randomise and see what pick number two will be. A book set in a place you'd like to visit. Let's find out what pick number three will be. A book that starts with the letter J. And let's see what pick four will be. A book that reminds you of a song. Sorry, I tapped the screen there with um, out pressing record, so it's randomised it, but so I'll run it again. So the last pick was a book that reminds you of a song. And the fifth pick is a fourth book in a series. Oh, that one could be easy. And let's find out what the sixth and final pick will be. A book with politics. Hmm, not sure about that one. That one could be difficult. So as you saw, the first uh, prompt is to read a book set in the tens. Now the prompt isn't specific whether that has to be the 2010s or it could be the 1910s, the 1810s. Um, you go with whatever you like. However, uh, with this one, I've picked 2010s and I've picked The Keeper of the Lost Things by Ruth Hogan. This is about a celebrated, a once celebrated author, uh, Anthony Perdue who to atone for a promise he broke many years before has been collecting lost things however in his twilight years he comes to a realization and he rushes to leave his home leaving all of those lost things to his assistant uh, with instructions for her for what to do with them those instructions have unforeseen repercussions and this book is the telling of what happens next this was given to me by a work colleague. Uh, she picked it up in a charity shop, read it, loved it, and she absolutely handed it over to me and said, you might enjoy this and um, give it a read. So it's been sat on my shelf for a couple of years and I feel a bit guilty about that. She doesn't want it back. So that's not so much of uh, the guilt. Uh, but the guilt is that I was handed this book and you know, told if I wanted to read it, then read it. Um, but if not, then to hand it over. It does sound intriguing to me and I do like the premise, so I am looking forward to it. At the moment, this is the only book on my shelves, uh, physical and ebook, uh, that are set in the tens that I've been able to find. I will do some more digging. Um, like I say, if I'm not in the mood for this at the point that I decide I want to read that prompt, then I will see if there's something else. If not, I'll just give it a go and see where I go from there. The second prompt that came out was to read a book set in a place you'd like to visit. 
I've actually managed to find a couple of choices for this. The first one is Camelot by Giles Christian. This has been on my TBR for 12 months. Yes, getting on, for, well, it's been on my radar for about two years um, after I read Lancelot, which is the previous book to this. Uh, but this, the paperback version of this one actually only came out last year. Um, this is about um, the time after or Arthur when the Saxons reinvade uh, England, uh, Britannia, and the lords of the country are struggling to reunite as they once did under Arthur to fight them back. However, um, an aging warrior, Gawain, um, and uh, willful, the willful Saxon hating uh, Isel. Um, it doesn't say whether she's a priestess, a warrior, what. Um, they do come together and they pluck Galahad uh, from obscurity uh, where he's living and they go on um, a journey to fight back the Saxons and to unite the lords of Britain as we know it. Um, I love this country that we live in. Um, Camelot is supposed to be um, set, you know, around about the area where I live. I live in the southwest of England, um, so certainly some of this book is going to be set in that area uh, for definite. And I just, I love this part of the world. I love the part of the world that I live in. I like going on holiday um, around here. Uh, so yes, uh, this is definitely set in a place I'd like to visit because I haven't seen enough of this Fair Isle that I live on and I really want to see more of it. And my second option for the place you'd like to visit prompt is Paris by Starlight by Robert Dinsdale. This came in a book subscription box a couple of years ago and it's about a young boy, Levon, who is travelling to Paris with his grandmother and she's telling him stories, magical stories, and it's about what happens um, when they reach Paris. I think it's a bit of magical realism. Um, it does refer to magic in the synopsis. Not really sure what it's about though. So I am intrigued. Paris absolutely is a city I'd like to visit. Um, and certainly I'd like to see it by starlight. Uh, so the title of this book does seem very fitting for that. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's another one that I keep looking at on my shelves and thinking I must get to it at some stage. Um, and yeah, I'm hoping that it would fit that prompt very nicely. And my third prompt is to pick a book that starts with the letter J. I've scoured my shelves and my Kindle and I have one book where the title starts with a J. Um, I have other books um if i were to be quite loose about how i interpret that i do have books where words in the title start with a j um but when you ignore the ah uh, ah uh, you know and and all the other prequel words um there is literally one book uh where the first word in the title starts with a j and that book is the jack of souls by stephen molino um this is about a young man, Harrick, who has to break a curse um, or die on his 19th birthday. He, um, in the course of doing this, he meets up with two other companions, one who is becoming a female knight and is going to be the first ever female knight, and another who used to be an immortal but is no longer and is addicted to drugs. The three of them together, um, grouped together to face war to face treachery um and also they support Harrick in his lone quest to uh break the curse other than that i don't know anything about it it's the beginning of an epic fantasy series uh it does sound kind of like what i'm in the mood for at the moment so yes this could be quite quick on uh my tbr it's been on my tbr for absolute years i think it's one of those uh, downloads that I did when um, I was getting lots of you know if you've read this you might like this recommendations from Amazon and yeah I thought that I would uh, just give that one a go as well so we'll we'll see what happens there I don't have any others like I say if I'm not in the mood for this one 
I do have other books um, so I've got Percy Jackson series so I could always use Jackson in Percy Jackson um, Felicity Heaton no actually Felicity Heaton I can't read that one but yeah I've got other books like I say that have J in the title that I could read um, but I'll, I'll let you know how I get on at the end of the month if I pick that one up or not so as you saw as well, the fourth prompt is to read a book that reminds you of a song. Now I've gone through, again, we're trying to find a book that started with the letter J. Obviously I've extensively gone through my shelves and my Kindle shelves and I haven't found a book that where the title grabs me and makes me think of songs that I enjoy. Um, other than that, what I tend to do is I tend to get fixated on an album when I'm reading certain books and... To do that I'm going to have to do a reread. Now again that's not tackling my TBR unless I count my audiobooks. Um, so I do have The Hobbit in audio but I have never listened to it and I've had it in audio for about 10 years. I've had an Audible account for quite a long time and I have quite a few that I've never listened to and I have quite a few that would be rereads um, but new reads on their own. So I have The Hobbit which I haven't listened to and The Hobbit, although it doesn't remind me of a song, it does, I do have an album that it's paired with. So I first picked up The Hobbit when I was 10 years old. When I was around about the age of 12, um, a new boy band came on the scene by the name of Take That. I became an absolute massive Take That fan and their first album, Take That and Party, I listened to while I was reading The Hobbit and since then, the Hobbit is synonymous for me with that very first album and I hear the songs in my head um, when I'm reading this even if I'm not listening to the music at the same time. So that is about as close as I can get to uh, a book that reminds me of a song um, and discounting rereads, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, because it's um, an audible read. Um, then yes I think I can just about get away with that one. The fifth prompt was to read the fourth book in a series. This was an easy one for me um, because I am at a point with a series where I'm about to read the fourth book and it's the last book in, that's currently out in this series. There are no more being written at the moment but I I do want to read it so I'm going to go with that and this is Flare of Promise by Jessie Donovan. This is the fourth book in her Asylums for Magical Threats series and it's a continuation and when I read this it will knock a series off of my currently reading list. Um, Jessie has no current plans to continue the series which is sad because I think it's going to leave a lot of things open-ended. However this book is about two people, uh, Petra and Will. Petra faked her death and broke Will's heart in the process. She did all this to save her brother and since then she signed on as a mercenary in the world, uh, which I've talked about in previous videos. And then she finds out that Will is in danger uh, because he's decided to go down a different path in this world. And it's about how the two of them come back together, how Will learns that Petra isn't dead um, and they're coming back to each other and Will forgiving Petra. So I'm looking forward to reading it. It's going to be a very quick read. It's going to be um, a bit of a spicy read. Um, so I'm looking forward to that as well. I do like uh, romances that have some steam and uh, some spice to them. So definitely looking forward to picking this one up. The final prompt was to read a book that has politics in it. Um, now I'm a bit stumped on this one. I'm not really sure um, what I have on my shelves that would contain politics. And when I did a search um, on Google for fiction books that contain politics, I didn't really get anything up that matched with what I already have. So this is kind of probably going to be a fail. I'm probably not going to pass this one this month. However, I have picked a book and I've picked Lord of Chaos by Robert Jordan. This is book six in the Wheel of Time. Now, this is loosely interpreting the politics theme um, because there are lots of politics around what's happening in the world. 
ostensibly it is about war and it is about um, the ending of a world as we know it. However, there are lots of politics involved with Rand and what he's been doing um, and where he's taking the people that he's come across. So I'm thinking this one, this one's been playing on my mind for a while now. Um, I kind of, I do need to pick it up and continue. Um, the reason I've been putting this off is because I know that this is the start of what is referred to as the slog. The next four or five books in this series are not easy to get through. They're, they're dense books anyway, the whole series are dense books anyway. And there are lots of information in them. And the next few books, you just feel like you're not moving forward with the story quite so much as you do with the previous five books. Um, so yeah, but it, I need to get on with it because I want to finish this series. I've said it many times before. I want to finish the series. I want to know what happens. I don't want to know spoilers. I want to read it for myself. So I'm going to maybe give this one a go. Now, what I might do is this could be one that carries over. Um, what I might try and do is to maybe read a chapter or two every day or every other day um, and just see how I, I go from there. I'm not going to force myself to sit down and read it in one sitting. I know that's impossible. Um, this is one of the biggest books in the whole series. In fact, I think it is the biggest book in the series. Um, it is almost a thousand pages. Yeah, it's 993 pages in total. Um, so it's a chunker. I think if you um, used to put this in your handbag, you'd have quite the weapon on your hands. Um, so yeah, it's definitely not one that's going to leave the house. It's definitely going to be one that I sit at home because um, it's heavy. <laughs> it's paperback, but it's heavy. Um, so yeah, so that's my loose interpretation for politics. As always, I do have lots of other books on my radar. Uh, the first one is uh, the April book club pick for Just One More Page book club. We are going to read um, a band book this month. Our theme when we ran the um, randomizer was to pick a band book and then we had lots of suggestions. I've never really looked at reading band books before. I've never really looked into band books. So this is a bit of a new thing for me, new thinking for me. Uh, but we have gone with All Quiet on the Western Front by Eric Remarche. Remark. Remark. Um, and this is set during, I think, World War One. I'm not sure if it's World War One or World War Two, but it follows some young German men who are challenged to get up, get out there and go to war and it's how they fare in the trenches. This is not going to be an easy read, I don't think. I don't think this would be an easy read at whatever time of the year we read this, whatever point we are in life. Uh, war stories, especially ones that are so heavily based in real events, are not easy reads. So I don't think this is going to be a book that I say I enjoy. I think it's going to be one that is going to be thought provoking and is going to be discussion provoking when we get to the end of the month. So yes, yeah, so I, while I want to say I'm looking forward to picking it up, I think, like I say, it's not going to be one that's going to be an easy read. And I think like with Lord of Chaos, I'm going to have to treat it as um, that one and I'm just going to have to read a little bit at a time and just try and take it in as I go and think about it as I move uh, through the chapters. And then as well as those, I have uh, quite a few books out from my library. I've got five books out from my library at the moment. So I do need to get on and read those as well. Um, I won't go into the synopsis of all of these. I have done a little library haul, which I will link up in the cards for you. Um, and so you can go and have a look because I do go into more detail about the synopsis there. Uh, the first book is uh, Heart So Fierce and Broken. This is the second book in Bridget Kemmerer's A Curse So Dark and Lonely series. I read A Curse So Dark and Lonely re very, very recently, absolutely loved it. Um, but because financially now with having my own place, money's a bit tight, I can't quite afford to buy books whenever I want to read the sequel anymore. Uh, so I did have a look. This was on my library's um, availability list. And so I put in for it and got it. So again, I want to pick this one up quite quickly. 
The next book is A Mighty Dawn by Theodore Brunn. This has been blurbed by uh, Giles Christian. It's historical fiction, but I think this is more around the Vikings kind of um, historical fiction. Um, again, looking forward to picking this one up. Not quite sure when though. This might be one that gets um, renewed or returned and then taken out again um, at another date. But I did like the sound of it and it will just depend on how my mood goes. The next two are books that I've been heavily influenced by Bookstagram and Booktube. And the first one of those is Sunlin Ascends by Josiah Brancroft. Um, again, fantasy novel. Um, I'm in the mood for a lot of fantasy at the moment, I think. Um, although not all fantasy is kind of gra grabbing me. Um, but I'm looking forward to picking this one up and um, going through this one. Um, probably going to get to that one quite quickly as well if I can. Uh, because I'm just really interested in how the story is going to grab me um, and I know it's a completed series and I know my library has the entire series so I could get through that um, and it gives me a reason to get out and get some exercise as well because my library is close enough to walk to. And the next one is The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. Um, very, very much influenced uh, by all the hype around this one. Uh, so yes, not sure if I'm going to read it or not. Um, I might try. It might be a nice palette cleanser in between some of the heavier stuff that I've got around at the moment. Uh, so yes, definitely going to give that one a go um, and I'll see how I get on. And the final book that I've got out from the library but wasn't in that book haul, um, so I will talk about it a little bit more in detail, is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. Um, I know that there are some issues with Sarah J Mass around at the moment. Um, yeah, but this is why I've got it from the library and haven't purchased the book because by taking this out from the library, I'm supporting my library, but I'm not really supporting the author. This book is following on from where A Court of Frost and Starlight, which was the novella series, rounding off uh, Feyre and Rhysand's story. Um, it picks up from there but this time we're going to follow Cassian and Nesta they are uh, fated mates I think or you know eternal mates or whatever uh, term Sarah has used the author has used um, this book is, although this book is only a few months old it is absolutely hammered um, I've already started reading this book uh, I'm interested to see how well Sarah J Maas has dealt with um, mental health issues um, and trauma issues because Nesta is very much dealt with that. We are seeing a lot of flashback uh, from her um, and I'm interested to see how Cassian reacts. I've heard that there's good representation but I'd like to see it for myself um, and I have already started it. I went to pick it up from the library and then I went and sat in the sun for half an hour and I started it and then I picked it up and read it for a bit longer last night. So yeah, so I think this is probably going to be the first finish of April, um, but I am looking forward to it. A couple of other books I want to mention quickly. Um, I've taken to listening to audiobooks on my journey to work. I'm currently listening to Heroes by Stephen Fry, which I'm absolutely loving. Uh, I've, I've gotten quite interested. I've always been vaguely aware of Greek mythology and that maybe it's something I should look into and read. I've always been interested in that sort of thing. And um, I've read a couple of retellings uh, which have piqued my interest. And then I wanted to go more into the actual myths themselves. I think the reason why I haven't done it is because I don't feel like the actual texts that are out there are that accessible. Um, but someone recommended that I give Stephen Fry's um, adult versions a go. And I love Stephen Fry's telling anyway. He narrated in the UK. He narrated all the Harry Potter books. They are some of my favourite audiobooks that I have ever listened to. He's just such an amazing voice actor. And he's narrated his own books that he's written around Greek mythology and around the Greek myths. I'm about a third of the way through this one, so I probably I might alternate this with The Hobbit, um, but I'm definitely going to continue reading that one this month. Um, 
And yeah, I'm just absolutely loving it because he just goes off in, on complete tangents, um, which are completely random and quite funny. Uh, so uh, the definitely, definitely, if you want to get into Greek mythology, I think, um, and the actual myths themselves, then I, I'm finding his telling very, very accessible. And the other book I want to talk about is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. This was the final prompt pick uh, for my March TBR and I've not been doing very well with it. I don't know whether it's that the story isn't grabbing me, but I'm certainly not gravitating towards picking it up. I haven't decided if it's going to be a DNF um, or if it's going to be one that I put down and maybe come back to at another time. I'm kind of in the mood for fantasy, but I just think that maybe this is too details there's lots of new words uh, to listen to um and to pick up on and language and i just maybe feel that it's too much for me at the moment and maybe i just need to go and pick up some of the lighter stuff that's that's around um maybe some fantasy romance like i am with a court of silver flames and just see where i go from there so i'm not too sure about that one at all so that's my reading plan for April. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be, especially when I did that massive library book haul. Um, what are you looking forward to reading in the month of April? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you all there as well. If you have enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you're enjoying my content, then please do subscribe to my channel. I make videos every week and I put them up on Mondays at 6.30pm UK time. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.